We are at the whims of entropy, shackled by the laws of thermodynamics. Our creativity is imprisoned by an insidious foe. Heat. But we can fight back. We can imprison our enemy in a cage of copper. And in that brief respite, we are at last free. All things are transient, and thermodynamics cannot be beaten. But for that singular moment in time, what wonders we shall see. This is a new camera that I picked up recently. It's an Insta360, and it captures footage on both sides of the camera in a 360 degree pattern. And the idea is I want to use this for interviews so that I can capture both the subject and the scenery as well as myself without needing to take along a film crew with me. Uh, but there's a, a fatal flaw to these cameras, and it's that if you use both sides at 4K resolution, uh, they overheat pretty quickly. You get 20 or 30 minutes out of it before you need to just shut it down, let it cool down. So we're gonna fix that today by making a custom housing for it. And as you can see, I've already <laughs> opened it up and have done some preliminary investigation. So we'll zoom in and take a look at what's going on. So there are four main components in this disassembly. There is the camera sensor and lens assembly, which is actually a pretty neat little thing. I'll get a close up in a second, but it's basically a camera sensor, a 45 degree prism, maybe some optics in there, and then the fisheye lens. And that goes uh, like so, mounted on the inside, there's the blue goop is helping spread heat off of the sensor chip. And that just kind of hangs out there in the middle. So we pull that out. And then on top of that is this aluminum plate, which sits like so. And this serves two purposes, well, three purposes. It has mounting points for two pieces of electronics. I think this is a microphone, and I'm pretty sure this is like a light sensor, maybe for the HDR function. Uh, the pink goo is thermal spreading compound, so this acts as a big heat sink. And then it also makes a seal to the O-ring and makes it waterproof. So that goes on top of there. And then on top of the aluminum was a piece of plastic. This is kind of like a rubbery plastic to help protect it. it. Has some grip. And I suspect this is one of the reasons it overheats. This just doesn't let heat out of this aluminum very well. So once this aluminum saturates with heat, it shuts down. So the plan is to take this aluminum plate, mill this section flat. I reckon it's about 1.5 to 2 millimeters thick. So there should be some meat there that we can cut basically this central region and flatten it, take off these features uh, without too much damage to this plate. And then we're gonna make two new components that will mount to this whole assembly. The first, this will be made out of copper and it's basically gonna be a thin heat sink that will be bonded to that freshly milled surface. So it'll go something like that. And the idea here is that we'll take all the heat that's ending up in this aluminum plate transfer it to this heat sink and you know dissipate some of it through the fins and also just transfer it down to the base down here and then to the base of this will be this boxy structure which is made out of aluminum we'll bond those together and this will act two purposes it'll be the mounting point for the insta 360 so there's a hole there to mount it and then a hole on the bottom, threaded hole, so that we can mount the selfie stick. And the other purpose is to take this a little electronic. This is a tentacle sink. It's just a audio syncing device that I've been using recently. Really like them, so I didn't want to lose it. Uh, so it'll just hang out down there and collect audio and provide syncing time code stuff. So yeah, that's the basic plan. It should hopefully be pretty simple. Step one will be milling this flat and then you decide if I want to do it on a CNC or the manual mill. And then from there, we'll make the uh, heat sink. Yeah, so I don't know what happened here. Something about my manual milling machine spindle is not well. So we're gonna transition over to the CNC machine and just jog it around manually, treat it basically like a manual mill. It's a little janky, but it gets the job done. Next up is the heat sink. I'm gonna use a super glue fixture for this part. It's basically a piece of metal with grooves cut in it. 
and that allows us to press the sheet metal down onto the fixture and the glue can squeeze out into the grooves. So we get good metal on metal contact between the fixture and the part and there's still plenty of space left over for the glue to hold on to it. This is actually a really robust method and I use it all the time. The super glue that I'm using dissolves in acetone relatively quickly and it's also rubberized which makes it a little tougher. Parts tend to come off after 24 hours in the acetone. You can also heat it up to speed up the process. I used too much super glue on this part and it was a bit of a pain to get off, but eventually we got it free. Then it's time for the aluminum body. I did five sides in the first operation, flipped it, and did the last final side in a secondary operation. And because this part's probably gonna get scratched up in daily use, I threw it in the tumbler to give it a nice matte finish. It'll hide some of those blemishes over time. Then we just need to reassemble everything. And this was <laughs> a lot harder than disassembling. There are two little ribbon cables that were very difficult to get reseated, and it took 30, 40 minutes of fiddling around before I finally got everything back together. But once reassembled, I was very relieved to see that it still works. <laughs> everything turns on, it records video fine. I didn't ruin anything into the process, so that was great. Which means it's time to actually bond on the heatsink. I'm gonna be using this boron nitride thermal paste as the thermal grease to help transfer heat. And then around the edges, I'm gonna use this epoxy resin, which is, it's made for like potting electronics, so it has a pretty high thermal coefficient, but you know, it's an epoxy. So you can see my strategy here is to spread the thermal paste across most of the surface, leaving a thin band at the edge for epoxy. I don't know why I didn't put screws here. That would have been a lot easier. I just wasn't thinking about it, I guess. And then it's the same idea on the camera itself. A little bit of epoxy at the top to hold things and thermal paste on the rest of the surface. And that's it. That is the finished product, and it came out looking pretty good. Of course, we don't really know if this does what it was designed to do, help spread heat. So we're gonna do a long running test. I've got a thermocouple kind of just stuck into the heat sink at the top so we can see what the max temperature is. This location on the camera seems to be the point of the most heat, so it'll be the highest temperature here. And then we'll just let it record and see how long it lasts. A stationary setup like this is the worst case scenario for an Insta360. You can actually get long recording times if you're doing something active like biking or skiing or something where there's airflow over the camera, but just sitting stationary with no active airflow is when they overheat in like 20 minutes. So we'll see if it lasts longer than 20 or 30 minutes. And we can see here that it recorded basically until the battery ran out, which is super cool. That was one hour and 11 minutes for that one. And I think, yeah, so one hour and 20 some minutes. It's pretty hot, <laughs> 41 degrees, uh, let's see, 108 degrees Fahrenheit, 110. It's pretty warmy. There's the front of it. Uh, yeah, definitely it's warm up there. Actually, the whole thing is pretty warm. 
Um, it's interesting how much the aluminum body actually heated up quite a bit too, which is good, you know, more thermal mass, but definitely is distributing the heat around. Cool. I'd say that's a success. Okay, well that was a huge success, honestly. Uh, the heatsink works exactly as intended. It basically keeps the camera on until the battery runs out. So I get about an hour and a half of uh, video time as opposed to 20 or 30 minutes that it used to be. So that's fantastic. Uh, it is a little heavier than it used to be, but you know, just need to go to the gym or something. Not a big deal. And the invisible seam along the edge is pretty good. Uh, you can see a little bit of the heat sink down here at the bottom, but by and large, it's mostly out of the shot. I don't think anyone will notice, especially if it gets cropped out in post. So yeah, I'm super happy. I hope this was just a fun little video and you enjoyed it too. And I'll see y'all next time.